What's up everyone, NK here. Today I'm going to be reviewing the XG248Q gaming monitor by Asus. Alright, so just a quick side note. The main reason why I did this review um, was because I couldn't find a decent descriptive review of this monitor online. I mean, maybe it's because of it being the younger brother of the XG258Q, which is only a 1 inch screen size difference. I'm not sure. Um, I just wanted to help people decide if they should buy this monitor so they don't waste their money. I'll leave some info down below, like uh, sites you can buy this monitor at, or just, and I'll leave uh, like a bunch of specs and everything will be down below so you can take a look there for more info. Let's just start off with the basic specs of this monitor. This is a 1080p TN gaming monitor with a staggering 240Hz refresh rate and a 1 millisecond response time. In this video, we're going to talk about the features internally and externally within this monitor and help you decide if this is the right monitor for you. So in terms of uh, connectivity options with your ports, you have a DisplayPort 1.2, which is what you're going to use to get your 240Hz out of. You got your HDMI 2.0, which I believe you can only get 60Hz out of for some reason. And your USB 3.0 if you want to connect your uh, keyboard and mouse to the monitor itself. So what comes in the box is actually very handy. So what comes in the box is the power cord, the power adapter, DisplayPort cable, quick start guide, the LED light covers, which I'll talk about later in the video, the HDMI cable, which is which is useful, uh, support CD, and a warranty card. This monitor is also equipped with AMD FreeSync, which is a technology that delivers smooth, fast, and fluid gameplay by eliminating screen tearing and choppy frame rates, and by minimizing display stutter and input lag. It performs this by connecting with your AMD powered graphics card and matching the frames with the monitor similar to Nvidia's G-Sync. With AMD's FreeSync enabled, you're going to have an amazing smooth experience. So just keep that in mind when you're buying the monitors just to make sure you have the right card for the right technology. This monitor also does feature the ULMB which is the ultra low motion blur which achieves a 1 millisecond response time to help eliminate smearing and motion blur and make, make objects look smoother and sharper so that gameplay is more fluid and responsive. If you, this is for users that don't have uh, the, don't have an AMD graphics card and you have an Nvidia graphics card for example and you can't use the FreeSync technology simply because you can't have the FreeSync technology and the ultra low motion blur on at the same time. So you can turn this on to help, to help optimize your game for a more smoother experience. Which is, which is always a great option if a G-Sync monitor is out of your budget. Now because of this monitor being one inch smaller than its older brother, the XG258Q, you do have a higher, a higher pixel density and the quality does look a little bit better. Now since, it, since it's a TN panel, you are limiting some viewing angles and you are um, losing a little bit of that color accuracy, but at a t for a 240Hz gaming monitor that shouldn't really matter. For the use it's made for. And also, the colors are a little bit weird out of the box. You kind of do have to play around with the settings to try and get more accurate colors. So just a quick tip when buying a gaming monitor or any monitor in general. When it says 1MS or 2MS, 3MS, that means that is the response time of the pixel. It's not, the, it's not the actual rate of the input lag, and that's how manufacturers kind of trick buyers into thinking they're getting the fastest possible response time when purchasing their, their products. What it actually means is it's gray to gray usually, meaning it's the time it takes from one pixel to change from one shade of gray to another shade of gray. For example, from black to white, it's going to take one millisecond to change. Obviously, it'd be less than one millisecond if it was from one shade of red to another shade of red, for example. So just something to keep in mind when actually buying a monitor. There's no real way to tell the input lag rating on a monitor. So you kind of just got to research around and try to figure out which ones uh, have, the best, uh, have the best input lag ratings rather than response time ratings. And what I mean by input lag is the actual uh, delay from when the, you press a button or a key to actually the effect of pressing that button or a key appears on the screen. So for example, left clicking to shoot your gun in a game there's a, a certain delay and that would be what I'm referring to as input lag which is different from response time it's not the same thing all right so with this monitor you do have a nice aggressive mean look to it there's three leg a three-legged stand there's a 
There's a LED shining out the bottom, there's LEDs coming out of the back, and it's just a really nice looking monitor overall. Um, the stand, when I grab it and when I move the monitor around, it does feel really, really strong. It, I don't know what kind of metal they use, but it's very, very strong, very robust, very sturdy, and it just, you can tell it's just not going anywhere. Um, it's very, very good build quality. I'm very impressed uh, with Asus on this one. Um, so if you're looking for something that, ha that has a good build quality, this is but definitely a monitor to consider. So this monitor does have a really nice thin bezel along the top and the sides. Um, it does have a uh, it does have a bezel length of about or width I should say about five eighths of an inch, and it's very it's very good if you want multi monitor setups with this monitor if it's within your budget. Not only that, it does also match well with the other the other gaming monitors. They also have very thin bezels as well if you're looking for that multi-monitor setup. So you're probably wondering what are all the lighting effects all about in this monitor? Well, first let's start off with the one that shines down on the desk. So this is a red LED that shines through a cap that has a lens in it. You kind of just attach to the bottom the bottom uh, column there, I guess you could call it. It, uh, it does have three different lenses that come in the box. Um, the first one being the one you see on the desk right now, along with two more. One being another Republic of Gamers logo that you could choose if you'd like, or a blank one for personal customization, which is very cool. So also you have the Asus RGB lighting around the back, which is very, very aesthetically pleasing. There's something about it that I love a lot, but what I do hate is that it's not bright enough and you can't really see it. So it is syncable. You can sync with the rest of your system. If you are, if you do have your desk positioned in a way, where someone will be seeing the back of it, it does look really cool. So all in all, this monitor is just a complete juggernaut when it comes to fast paced shooters. So is this monitor really for you? Only if you play extremely fast paced games like Rocket League, CSGO, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, games where you want the upper hand in every single moment because of that high refresh rate uh, where you can take advantage of your, of your quickness, of your speed, of your response time of your reaction times, that's when I would suggest this monitor to someone. It's not for typical gamers who just simply play single player games um, because you are limited to color color accuracy because it because this monitor is a TN panel. So in that case, I suggest, I'd suggest going for an IPS panel if you're looking for better colors. Um, IPS panels do tend to have a higher response time. Just keep that in mind. Um, but you can find uh, bigger monitors uh, for cheaper price or you can just go for a uh, 4K or 1440p monitor if you want a higher resolution. So it just all depends on the type of games you play. Um, for me, I play fast paced games as well. I love this monitor a lot. So what do you think of the xg 24 aq Is it overrated? Underrated? Will you be buying it? Will you be gifting it to someone? Or do you hate the monitor entirely? Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll be more than happy to read your comments. And if you have any questions regarding the monitor, maybe something I missed, I'll be more than happy to help you out as well. So if you enjoyed the review, please hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to see more stuff like this and hit the subscribe button as well, because it's going to be coming. I'm going to keep pumping stuff out for you guys. I'm going to keep pumping content out for everyone to watch and enjoy. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.